everyone, it's Melinda with Tailored and Teal, a part-time online reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. And today's video is another episode of What is eBay Talking About? The Fabric Type Edition. This is actually a viewer requested video. And to be honest, it's a video that I needed to do research for myself because on the fabric type under the item specifics, I always put NA, non-applicable or unknown because I really just, number one, didn't wanna take the time to research it. And number two, I wasn't quite sure what type of fabric to put. So we're gonna go over all of the types of fabric that they list within the fabric type. And I'll try to put up some pictures or like an example to kind of show you an idea of what it may look like. All right, so the first fabric on the list is canvas. So this is an extremely durable, plain woven fabric for making sails, tents, marquees, backpacks, shelters. It is the base for paintings and other items which sturdiness is required, as well as such fashion objects as handbags, electronic device cases, and shoes. So it's usually made of cotton or linen and it is a somewhat thick material. I always think of like canvas shopping bags or um, like the Keds white sneakers, that kind of material. Also, I have my computer over here. So if you see me looking this way, that is why. Next on the list is chambray. Chambray is a cotton plain weave fabric made from a dyed warp yarn and a white filling yarn. Chambray is typically light blue in color. While it may look like denim, chambray is actually lighter and softer and is woven differently than denim. It is also thinner in construction. Chiffon is a lightweight and semi-transparent simple weave fabric. So the term chiffon is actually French and it literally translates to cloth or rag. Chiffon stands out due to the unique method that is made to produce it, has a lot of alternative S and Z twists within the fabric, which results in a slightly puckered fabric that leads to greater elasticity and produces a more textured appearance. Chiffon is not really used in everyday clothing. It's usually made in like nightgowns or evening wear or blouses that are made for special occasions. Since it is semi-transparent, it is common to use chiffon in layering pieces. Next is corduroy. Corduroy is a durable ridged fabric that the textile producers can make with a variety of different materials. This fabric is most notable for its unique rigid pattern while corduroy producers can weave in a variety of widths. So you can have a thin corduroy or you can have a super thick corduroy. It is typically a soft feeling material and the fabric has a higher pile, meaning that the fabric actually stands up pretty high from the base of the garment itself. Crepe, so this is C-R-E-P-E. -E. It is a weaving or fabric treatment method that results in a unique rippling three-dimensional texture. Garments and other textiles made from crepe fabric are generally delicate and used for ceremonial purposes. It is commonly used in high fashion and other types of decorative apparel designs. Next is crochet. Crochet is the process of creating fabric from yarn or thread. It is very similar to knitting, but it is different in the way that the fabric is constructed by pulling loops of thread or yarn through other loops. This type of fabric can either be thin or thick depending on what type of yarn or thread is used. Next is denim. Denim is a strong cotton fabric made from a twill weave, which creates a subtle diagonal ribbing pattern. Most often the cotton is dyed in an indigo color, giving you the classic blue jean look. And denim can also have spandex woven into it to make it an easier and more comfortable fit, which is very popular today. Next on the list is down. It is a fine thermal insulator and padding used in goods such as jackets, bedding, like duvet covers, pillows, and sleeping bags. It's made from goose or duck plumage, which is the really soft, fluffy stuff underneath the animal's wings. It is used for its ability to efficiently trap heat. Down is also incredibly breathable, allowing to wick unwanted moisture away from the body. So this is a really good option for people who love the outdoors and like to wear layering pieces. 
Next is flannel. Flannel is a soft, medium weight cotton fabric that is napped or has a fuzzy texture to it. Sometimes on one side and sometimes on both sides, it'll have that fuzzy feeling. This napped finish either comes from the fabric being brushed or from its characteristic loosely spun weave. It gives you a soft and cozy feel, makes you super warm and comfortable, and is often woven with other patterns, especially plaid and tartan. And it is a favorite type of fabric for sheets in the wintertime to keep you warm. Another fabric to keep you warm is fleece. Fleece is defined as a synthetic, fuzzy, warm, moisture resistant fabric. It is made from polyester, but it can have other fibers woven into it to create different textures and looks. It has a pile surface on both sides of the fabric, meaning that each side is a layer of cut fibers, giving the signature fuzzy look and feel. Next is French Terry. French Terry is a knit fabric similar to Jersey Knit with loops on one side and soft piles of yarn on the other. This knit results in a high plush texture. It's used in sweatshirts and sweatpants and other kind of loungewear. French Terry is a mid-weight fabric. It's lighter than your cold weather sweatpants, but it's heavier than your typical t-shirt. It's cozy, moisture wicking, absorbent, and it keeps you cool. Next is Jersey. It is a soft, stretchy knit fabric that was originally made from wool, but today Jersey is mostly made from cotton and cotton blended material. The outside of the Jersey knit fabric is smooth with a slight single rib knit, while the backside of the Jersey is piled with little loops, very similar to French terry. The fabric is usually light to medium weight and is used for a variety of clothing and household items. Next is a knit fabric. Knitted fabric is a textile that results from, you guessed it, knitting. <laughs> it is the process of interlooping yarns or intermeshing of loops. It is similar to a woven fabric, but it's more flexible and can be easily constructed into smaller pieces. You will find knitting most commonly in sweaters. Next is lace. Lace is a delicate web-like fabric that the textile producers can manufacture using a wide range of techniques. Traditionally, lace consisted of silk or linen threads. Nowadays, cotton has been the most popular thing to make lace, and some manufacturers use synthetic fibers like polyester or rayon to make it as well. Next, we have mesh. Mesh can be used a variety of ways. It is woven loosely, which results in holes being present in the fabric, and depending on its use depends on how large those holes are going to be. It is lightweight and made from synthetic material, and knitted mesh is frequently used for modern sports jerseys and other clothing like hosiery and lingerie. Next is microfiber. Microfiber refers to a synthetic fiber which is extremely thin, even thinner than a strand of silk. Most commonly made from polyester, it can hold up to seven times its own weight in water, which is why you'll see a lot of this fabric in different types of cleaning cloths because it holds that moisture and you're able to clean more efficiently with it. Next is micro fleece. So this is basically just fleece, but it is thinner and it's a more flexible form. Um, honestly, I couldn't really find too much information on this one, so that's what I have to go off of. <laughs> Next, we have rayon. Rayon is a fabric made from purified cellulose fibers, which are typically created from wood pulp, which I did not know. Uh, though rayon is derived from natural materials, it requires certain chemicals to be made, so it's considered to be a semi-synthetic fabric. One of the most common types of rayon is viscose, which I actually learned how to say this word before I did this video so that I could say it correctly. So according to Google, it is viscose. I know I've said it numerous ways in my other videos, so just setting the record. So rayon is breathable, it's moisture absorbent, it's stretchy, and it is a popular choice for casual and athletic wear. Next on the list is shearling. So shearling is the skin from a recently shorn sheep or a lamb that has been tanned and dressed with the wool left on it. It has a suede surface on one side and has a clipped fur surface on the other side. The suede side is typically worn on the outside with the shirling on the inside to keep your body warm. And Sherpa, which actually isn't on one of eBay's fabric type, but I thought that I would mention it here, is the synthetic man-made version of shirling. You will mostly see this type of fabric in slippers and jackets that have shirling liners in them. 
Next is soft shell. So this is designed to ensure maximum comfort in situations of variable weather. This type of fabric is suitable for the outdoors and for prolonged physical effort. So like outdoor exercise or hiking or things like that. It is most suitable garment for dressing in layers. The fabric is created specifically to facilitate the release of moisture and to regulate the body temperature. Next is taffeta. Taffeta is a crisp, plain woven fabric made most often from silk, but it can also be woven with polyester, nylon, acetate, and other synthetic fibers. Taffeta fabric typically has a lustrous, shiny appearance. Taffeta can vary in weight from light to medium and in levels of sheerness depending on what type of fiber is used and the tightness of the weave itself. It is very popular with ball gowns and evening wear. Next we have terry, which is also commonly referred to as terry cloth. Um, it is a fabric covered in tiny loops designed to be both highly absorbent and soft to the touch, which is why most towels are made from this type of material. It is very strong and durable and it actually is stronger once it becomes wet. Next we have tweed. Tweed is a rough woven fabric that is usually made from wool. Tweed is extremely warm, hard wearing fabric that is thick and usually stiff. Wool tweed is often woven using different colored threads to achieve a dynamic pattern and colors and frequently with small squares and vertical lines. Tweed is very popular in jackets, blazers, and suiting type of clothing. Next is twill. Twill weave has a diagonal rib pattern. Twill weave has a distinct, often darker colored front side and a lighter back side. Twill usually has a higher thread count, which means that the fabric is thick and durable. If you remember a few fabrics back, denim is actually a twill weave. So that makes sense now. Uh, twill fabrics are rarely printed on, though multiple colored yarns can be used to achieve different designs like tweed, which we just mentioned, and houndstooth patterns. This type of weave is most commonly used with cotton and polyester, and I usually think of chino pants when I think of a twill weave fabric. Then we're down to the Vs. So first we have velour. Velour is incredibly soft, knitted, plush textile, and is very similar to velvet, but it's less expensive to make. It's typically made from cotton, but can also be made from polyester and has a light stretch to it. Velour has a higher pile, meaning that it stands up from the base of the fabric, and Juicy Couture are instantly what comes to my mind when I think of velour for some reason. <laughs> and then lastly is velvet. Velvet and velour, like I said previously, are very similar. Velvet was originally made with silk, but due to the silk's cost, these days it's typically made from synthetic materials. Velvet is also very soft, but it is woven differently than velour, and it has a shorter pile, meaning that it isn't as plush like a velour type of fabric would be. It is very commonly used for evening gowns and drapey type items. So that's all we have for fabric types. Hopefully you learned something new and I hope that you take that knowledge with you. And I hope it makes you listing your eBay fabric types much easier. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I put out videos at least once a week. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.